Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of Crystals with Kate. Our crystal for this week is Dragon's Blood Jasper. Dragon's Blood Jasper is one of my absolute favorites. It's a newer crystal in my personal collection. Um, Definitely one I hope to add to my Etsy shop soon as well. I love it. Um, It is just a really beautiful like greenish red color and all of the pieces I have look so different from each other just from the variations in pattern. So we are going to dive right into one of my favorites today. So just a little bit of geological background to start us off as always. Dragon's Blood Jasper is only found in Western Australia. It is the only place in the world that you can find it. Um, So pretty sweet. Um, it is also a sedimentary rock, so technically it's not a true jasper, because jaspers are traditionally identified as silicate mineral forms, so it does have a a sail name, basically, as a jasper, but it's not a true jasper. Kind of like grape agate isn't really grape agate, it's a calcedony, but that's a topic for a different day. Um, it is also a seven on those scale of hardness, so it's about as hard as quartz is. And the beautiful green and red color comes from two different minerals. The green comes from a mineral known as green epidote. And the red, I know I'm going to butcher this, but I'm going to try. It is red pimonite, pimonite. So those two together are mixed in the sediments, and that creates that beautiful coloring in dragon's blood jasper. The next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is how this will help you in your spiritual journey. Because a lot of us like to work with crystals for the purpose of spiritual healing. Um, It has a overall very high mature vibration. It really helps to bring out someone's maturity, whether that is your earthly maturity or if you're trying to grow as a spiritual being, um, raise your vibration. It also helps to balance your sensibilities Um, helps balance out those emotions and it really assists you in that sense of bravery it makes you more confident in yourself like going into situations so you can be brave you can face things that you aren't really sure about and move on from there Um, it's also known for basically helping you grow up Um, it's nicknamed the grow up stone in some areas Um, and again that is is both your spiritual and your earthly manners and the next thing is it helps to raise your standards so instead of like accepting lower things because you know that's what you're used to or it's what's convenient it really pushes you as a more mature being to raise your standards and really open yourself up to like what you deserve which to me really feels like the whole like accept the love that you know you deserve not what you think you deserve Um, because your worth is a lot more than you think it is most of the time. I don't know why, but that's just the analogy that comes to mind when I read this. The other thing I wanted to share with you guys is a little bit of the mythology. So a lot of the ancient and indigenous cultures in Australia have attributed that the red and green color comes from the remains of dragons. So it's almost... So, like, they were fossilized into the dragon's blood jasper, which, if you guys listen to the Labradorite episode on this, with the fallen northern lights aspect with the Indian tribes in the area, it's kind of the same ideology. It's like, when they passed, the green was that skin of the dragons, and the red was their blood, which I think is just super interesting, Um, and that is where the dragon's blood aspect of it comes from that we see today. All right, so we are going to dive into our emotional and physical healing as well and some correspondences, but first we're going to take a quick break. Before we keep going, I'm going to go ahead and do a shameless self-plug. So as I mentioned, um, our Instagram and TikTok handle is kates.crystalsshop on, and again, Instagram and TikTok. We also do have a Facebook page. We do do a lot of live sales. On my TikTok bio, I also have a link tree that links you to my Patreon. So my Patreon is something I'm really, really excited about. I do have four tiers. The two upper tiers come with monthly crystal mystery boxes of varying sizes. 
um, my lower two layers as well as all of the upper layers come with information on the crystals and my show notes. And that is a great way to help support this podcast. Again, I am a small business owner. So this is the way I do make a lot of my money. And I really do want to be able to continue to uh, share my love of crystals with you guys. Um, There is also a link on there for donations and tips in my link tree. Again, nothing is expected, but all things are appreciated. Alrighty, guys, welcome back. So, on to our emotional and physical healing. As I mentioned before, normally the usage for crystals is aligned with metaphysical properties and or their healing properties, which is why I really like to break these down. However, just a reminder that you guys can love crystals just because they're pretty. There's nothing wrong with that. I just like to give you guys all of the cool correspondences and healing properties as well. So let's start with emotional. Emotional properties include um, supporting you for changes in relationships, specifically your romantic ones. Um, So really helping you as you go through those changes and those seasons of your life. I don't know if you guys also don't handle change well, but I am horrible with change. So it really helps you get through those changes in your relationships, whether it's a breakup or somebody new coming into your life or a riff with a friend or a family member. It would be a really good idea to work with your Dragon's Blood Jasper during this time. Uh, The next thing is it's really good for exploring your romantic patterns. So your positive patterns that you have in those romantic relationships and to really build those and grow those. Um, And to try to get rid of some that might not be supporting that romantic relationship. And the last thing I have for emotional healing is it helps to balance and create healthy boundaries. Um, As somebody that struggles with my mental health a lot, I've really struggled with developing my boundaries. Um, And I saw this before I got my Dragon's Blood Jasper. Um, It was on my wish list and I was trying to narrow it down to make a purchase. And I I saw that. And it just stuck out to me so much because I've really struggled with putting my foot down with my boundaries. And so I'm working with this one a lot right now. And I'd like to say I think it's helping. Um, So I recommend it. Um, It is one of those emotional properties that comes with it. It's really, really hard to set your boundaries. So if that's even something you're thinking about, like I'm proud of you. But on top of that, it is always good to have support, whether it's crystals or friends or family Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. If you decide to incorporate this into your practice, it is great if you want to work on those boundaries. The next thing is your physical healing. So physically, it helps to promote those good habits. So maybe it's filing your nails instead of biting them or eating healthier, or maybe you're trying to cut out your sweets or your soda or drink more water, whatever it is that you're trying to do that is for your physical health, and remember that everyone's health looks different, just a disclaimer. So whatever it is that is good for you and for your mind, body, and soul, it can really promote those good habits to develop. And the last thing is it helps to holistically heal. Um, A lot of holistic doctors, especially in Australia where this is found, um, use it in holistic practices to help heal. So I just thought that that was a cool little side note. So that is all I have on the healing properties of Dragon's Blood Jasper. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, The last little section of this podcast is going to focus on our um, chakra connections, our zodiac, and all of our other relationships. So the first one we're going to start with is our chakra. So it is associated with your heart and your sacral. Um, Really good. A lot of that has to do with like its coloring. It is that red and green. It really relates, and a lot of this has mentioned your relationships and, like, your love and your boundaries, which boundaries, to me, falls into that self-love aspect, which makes sense with it being related to your heart chakra. Next up, your zodiacs, and just remember, just because it is not one of your big three does not mean you cannot work with it. It just means it might have a stronger relationship or one of these and that would be the Gemini and the Sagittarius so if any of those are in your big three you are likely to have a stronger pull or connection to this crystal next up its planetary association is planet earth and its element I found was really interesting it is actually air earth and fire um 
which really makes me feel like the whole dragon mythology that comes with this is really shining through here because if you think about dragons like they're flying they breathe fire and they were on earth if you believe they were here then there's your air there's your fire and your earth all together in this and I really haven't seen a whole lot of crystals that have more than one element association much less more than two or having three and lastly our numerological association is the number two and remember that two means duality it has to deal with affection and guidance and sensitivity which really just relates back again to these this feeling of boundaries and self-love and love in general raising your vibration growing up and just being you so that is all I have for you guys for Dragon's Blood Jasper. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in for this week's episode of Crystals with Kate. And I cannot wait to see you guys again in two weeks. See you guys soon. Bye.